we found this cabinet on Facebook Marketplace for free. Which was pretty sweet because we weren't too excited about this build. It was one of those builds where you just want to have it done. The main reason we're building it is just to get some extra storage while also hiding the router as well as the outlets. And after picking it apart, we had more than plenty of material to build a new one. This is pretty much just half of it. As you might have noticed, pretty much all the material we got from this old cabinet was particle board. And that's not a bad thing in this case, since we want to make it look like a built-in cabinet, we're gonna cover it up in plaster anyways. So it would have felt like a waste if it was some nice solid wood. So once I was done offending all the cabinet makers out there, we put the first layer of paint on the inside before installing it onto the wall. Now the first layer was all about covering everything. And keep in mind that we didn't want this to be flat with sharp corners, so that's why we weren't too concerned with the finish here. For the second layer we decided to add some sand to the plaster to give it more texture. We wanted it to look similar to this, rough finish, soft corners and just an overall rustic look. It turned out good enough at the end, the sand really helped but it was still really tricky to get that finish that we wanted. I'm not gonna lie, I felt pretty done with plastering at this point. But of course we missed a few spots that we had to go back and fix before we could finally put some paint on there. But instead of washing paint dry, let's talk about the cabinet door. Here's our inspiration. Old, worn, and just a very simple design. We're using sheep lumber here. Even though I've done a few weather finishes now, it's still a lot of trial and error. I really like using this steel wire brush here. It digs up the soft grain in the wood and leaves it with a fairly convincing natural weathered look. Once I was happy with the texture, I'm wiping it down with the water here to make the wood grain rise, just to sand it down again and that way it less of that effect when I put the stain and finish on later. Here you can see the really small grooves that the wire brush carved out in the wood. And I'm not putting any stain there now. I thought it would get too dark since the grain there is really rough. Instead I tried a technique that I read about where you saturate the wood with water first. So when you put the stain on, the wood can't absorb as much of it. But it wasn't all that effective. A lot less effective than I hoped it would be, but it still turned out okay. Just as a fun detail, I'm gonna add a few of these rusty nails that I pull out of an old pallet, but it's just for the look. Before I put the nails in though, I'm gonna put the finish on first. Just to make sure I get into all the nooks and crannies, and I also don't wanna have the rusty nails to get any of that sheen from the finish too. I'm using these screws as feet for the back side, just so that I can flip it right away and continue with the front. Even though this is a matte finish, it still gets a little bit too much sheen for my liking when it comes to this weathered look, but 
I'm probably gonna experiment with something different next time. Probably my favorite feature, I made this little shelf for all the cables to sit on so that they're off the floor and out of sight, which I'm really excited about. I just find good cable management so satisfying. So for the hinges to this cabinet, we tried to find some old secondhand ones, we couldn't find any, so we went with these. We wanted something big and rough looking. These are made to have the door sit flush with the cabinet face. And we want this door to be partial overlay, to be slightly on top of the face of the cabinet here. So we're gonna have to bend this steel and also do something about the look to make it match a little bit better with what we have going on right now. Dark in the steel, I chose to use paint here. This is actually acrylic spray paint. It's something that I already had laying around and I really enjoyed using it on the lamp that I did just a couple of videos ago. And also, I feel like it's really easy to work with and just control all the small details as well. So as I'm putting it together, I'm starting to question the white color on the base of the cabinet. It feels a little boring and a little bit stale, especially, especially together with the rest of it. I'm thinking it would probably fit a lot better with something warmer, maybe with some glaze on there. Something like this. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. See you in the next one.